Hello and welcome to the Live Life Golden Show. This is episode 44. We're going to go over the 12 laws of the universe so you can master your vibration. I often just talk about the law of attraction because the law of attraction is the most powerful law in the universe and it really kind of all encompasses the 12 laws. But I thought it would be really fun to just break these laws down today so that you have more of a clear understanding of the laws that govern this universe. When you have a clear understanding of the laws, you can master your vibration within the laws and then you can create something new. When you really understand frequency and vibration and your energetic output, you become more at choice. You start to begin to decide how you want your life to play out and you reclaim your power on all fronts. So today is gonna be a cool conversation where we're gonna be enlightened, we're gonna become more aware, and we're gonna use these laws of the universe moving forward to create the life that we love, to create the life that we want to experience more of. You know, um, people will often say, we, we often live in like this lack, you know, this lack of what we want. We've got all these desires. We've got all these calls of our heart. And unfortunately, we live in the misery of it. You know, we live in the lack of it. We sit there and we wish and we hope and we pray, and we don't necessarily do anything in the direction of our dreams or in the direction of what we want to do to move forward. We think, you know, in the law of attraction, if you've listened to a lot of the different teachers, that if we just sit there and visualize, it's going to come to us. There is some truth in that. Visualization is a very powerful experience if you can put yourself in the feeling place. If you can literally leave your body here and get yourself in that future experience and connect with the way that will feel, <clears throat> and then you come back into your body, back into your physical experience here, and carry that energy with you, carry that vibration with you. If you visualize every day and you get into this happy, high gratitude place, and then when you're done with your meditation, you get ag aggravated and frustrated with your life and you're pissed off all the time, your visualization is not really going anywhere. You're not carrying the vibration through your day. So if you really want to use affirmations and visualizations to your benefit, you have to create the feelings. You've got to, you've got to connect with the feelings. You've got to connect with the vibrations and the frequencies and carry those throughout your day in every possible way that you can. So it's becoming that identity, which means if I am a financially free and abundant individual, I don't have issues with spending money. I don't have issues with paying my bills, right? So it's becoming that person. If I am a person who is looking for love, I want to create a loving partnership with someone, I'm not going to sit there in my misery and my loneliness. I'm not going to sit there and be, um, you know, all about myself because I know in order to connect and to love another partner, I have to reach out. I have to be love. I have to love others. I can't just sit here and only take care of my myself. I have to look beyond and decide who is that person. You know, if I was that person that was creating a loving, wholesome relationship, who would I be? I had a session with a guy a long time ago. I can't believe this is coming up. It's so funny. But it was really interesting, and this is kind of like those little millimeter shifts that we need to take to create the identity of who we want to be. So he had um, shared with me on the session that he wanted to come into a significant relationship, <clears throat> that he was interested in finding his partner, finding the love of his life. But his actions were going against that. So his actions were very much, he had many partners, he had many one night stands. And so his actions, his identity was not aligning with the man who wanted to be in a single relationship, that wanted to be in a, you know, an exclusive relationship. He was all over the place. So I said, if you really want to become this person that's in, a, you know, just a one person relationship, you have to let all those things go. So ask yourself in your life, you know, what are you holding on to right now that's not aligning with the identity of where you want to go? And then start moving towards it by activating those feelings, either through visualization, um, 
or finding someone who's already living your experience and, and kind of looking at what they do and the way they act. There's a lot of different things you can do to identity create. And the biggest thing is that vibrational output. It's how you feel every day. It's the frequency of what you're in. So that's a huge part of this. All right, so we're going to get started. The very first law that I want to cover today is the law of divine oneness. So you may have heard this before, but there's this mass consciousness, right? And everything is energy and we are connected to everything. We are, they have done scientific evidence that we are connected to everything, which means that every person we come in contact with, every um, object we come in contact with, we are all connected by this stream of infinite energy. So because of that, we have influence over the whole collective. And that's what I've been, you know, working on this podcast to get this message across. The more peaceful, the more loving, the more joyful, the more compassionate that we feel, the more we're going to see that in our world. So that's why it's so important for each individual. You know, you think that you're one person and you can't make a difference. You absolutely can. The more of us that awaken, the more of us that are enlightened, the more of us that understand that we are all connected and every thought and every feeling you have about other people is being sent to them. So if you have somebody in your life that you're having issues with, change the way you think about them and you will shift the relationship because everything you're doing is being sent. It's being sent to them. And that is a really important concept to understand. You know, when you think, I've never done anything to this person, but you're thinking about them and you're talking about them negatively when you're not with them, that is felt. That is felt. It is sent out. It is a signal in the universe. It is atoms and particles and molecules, and it becomes. So pay attention to what you are sending out, what signals you are sending out to those people in your life experience. And if you can shift that, if you can start creating a little bit of gratitude with those in your life and looking for what you love about them, you will shift relationships really easily. And you can do this with anything, like your job, your... Um, your house, everything is, is being wrapped in this energy of how you feel about it and what you say about it and what you think about it. So the second law, so every single atom inside of you is connected to everything else in the universe. When you understand that, it's kind of mind blowing, right? Like it's like, what? Like I'm connected to everything. How is that even possible? But it's the truth. It is the absolute truth that we are all connected, that we are all part of the same infinite stream. So when you know this, you're going to be much more aware of where am I sending my energy? How am I sending my energy? What am I doing to contribute to the energy of the world? Am I fussing? Am I fighting? Am I resisting? Am I in the minutia? Am I, you know, upset about the way the world is? If it's all of those things that you're conducting from, you're just adding to the bullshit. So we've got to pull back. We've got to stop doing that. And we've got to reclaim our power on that front for sure, without a doubt. That's how we're going to change the world, people. All right, law of vibration. This is one of my favorite laws. And I talked about vibration on my last podcast. If you haven't heard um, episode 43, it was a great foundation for manifesting, for foundational manifesting. So everything has a frequency and a vibration. If you could ma imagine that we have a big radio station, we're tuning into those stations based on how we feel, based on our mood, based on our feelings, our beliefs, and our judgments. All of that is energy that we are sending out into the universe. And because of that, we are drawing those things back to ourselves. Uh, another way to explain it is like we're a big light board. So we're lighting up a signal to the universe to bring us things of that like nature. So if you're frustrated, if you're angry, if you're upset, all you're going to see evidence of all of that. If you're happy, if you're joyful, if you're appreciative, you're going to see evidence of that. And it doesn't mean that bad things aren't going to come to you when you're in those higher vibrations. It doesn't mean that shit's never going to happen to you again. It just means when the shit happens to you, you, you're not as affected. You're not as triggered. You're able to deal with it a lot more um, gracefully and a lot more, you know, constructively where things happen and you go, okay, all right, I can, I'm going to back up from this energy. 
you know, this is, this may look like a problem right now, but I know solutions are coming and I know that everything always works out for me. When you're in that state in your life, when you have that level of awareness in your life, that level of vibration, you are conducting much more effectively. You are conducting much more beneficially and you are not slowing down energy because you're in the flow. You're in the flow of allowing things to go from a problem to a solution. You are allowing the contrast to show you the way, show you the things that need to be cleaned up, right? It's always, it's always a mirror, right? I'm going to get to that. Okay. The next one is, so yeah, law of vibration. Items of a similar vibration are attracted to one another in, that are in the same frequency. That's your radio station, baby. So if you're coming across a lot of cranky people, you got to look within, you got to look at yourself and you got to go, how am I conducting from this? Am I conducting from this? Because if you are coming across cranky people and you don't feel cranky, then you can offer them the love and compassion and you can actually shift their energy. You can help put them in a better mood for the next person. And that's how the trickle effect works. Call it the golden effect. That's how the golden effect works. You lighten somebody's mood, you make them laugh, you get them out of their head you are creating an effect that goes beyond you, goes to their families, goes to the people that they meet, and then so on and so on. And then we all just become these uplifters. And if we're all uplifters, then the world is just a better freaking place, right? Right. All right, number three is the law of correspondence. I also really love this. If you think about correspondence, right, like you write a letter, you write a letter to somebody, that's correspondence. You are communicating. That's what correspondence is. We are corresponding. We are communicating. So there is a law of this correspondence, a law of our communication. And what you send out is what you get back. This was the first law that I learned way back in my network marketing company when we were sending out greeting cards and the miracles that we would create were phenomenal. And the idea of this company was to wake up every day and to intuitively ask who needed to get a greeting card, right? And then it would take three or four days for them to get this card once you sent it, once you acted on that intuition. And I can't even tell you how many messages I got. You, I got your card at the perfect time. I was feeling so low. I got your card. It was so uplifting. That's when you understand that we are all connected. Yeah, because intuitively I get the download that this person could use some love, could use some appreciation. I send the card. They receive it, and it becomes a little miracle in their day and a miracle in mine. How cool is that? If you don't send cards, it's a beautiful thing to do. I have an online thing that you can connect with if you want to, and they send real physical greeting cards. You can even put pictures on them. It's freaking cool. If you got my Christmas card, you know. Um, so it's amazing. It really is. And it was like, I think it's like two something a card. Like it's super cheap. But anyways, you could do regular cards. You could just write a card out. I mean, we just don't normally do that, right? I even have an online service, and I still don't do it as much as I'd like to. But... I can always do that. I can always decide to do that. I can always decide to wake up tomorrow morning and send a card to somebody I intuitively am thinking about. Because when people pop into your head, there's a reason for that. There's an absolute, divine, miraculous, universally inspired reason for that. That's why a lot of times when you think of someone, they call you. Because we're all connected. I'm, I'm proving the first law right here, right now. Um, it's important to get in touch with your underlying feelings and why you may be feeling triggered about certain things. If you've got cycles in your life, if things are pissing you off, if you're on the edge a lot, if you're feeling angry a lot, it's a call to go within. It's a call to go within and heal these things and come to a new place where you can release these stuck energies and allow yourself to come into a, a new place where you let go of the past and you let go of the wounds and the traumas that have created long enough. All right, the fourth one is my favorite, the law of attraction, which is basically that which is a like itself is drawn. So it means like attracts like. Things of its own nature are, are attracted to one another because of the nature of frequency and vibration 
things that are like themselves are brought together. This is why you meet people and you go, oh my God, like we're so similar and we're so alike and we like the same things. This is why, because like attracts like. If you don't like the people in your life, you may want to start looking within and asking yourself, why am I, why is this person in my life? A lot of times it's just to heal some wounds. Uh, you get what you think about. Your thoughts are the ultimate magnetic devices. Now, beautiful thing is every thought does not attract. Thank goodness, because we'd all be in a boatload of crap if it was if that was true. For because of our tendency to think about worst case scenarios, right? But no, that's not actually. It's not your thoughts that are that are attracting necessarily. It's the feelings and the belief systems underneath the thoughts, and it's as you continue the thoughts. So once you start thinking a thought, you get in like 17 seconds, they say, and then another thought like it is drawn. So if you're in a bunch of anxiety, that's why before you know it, you know, you're down the road and you're like, holy crap, now I'm worried about something I haven't thought about in a long time because that vibr it's on the same vibrational frequency as the anxiety and fear that you first entertained in the beginning. So that's why like two o'clock in the morning, you start thinking about something before you know it, you're like worrying about everything because you have momentum. But the cool thing is the same thing happens when you're in love and appreciation and joy. Those thoughts are, have momentum and then you continue to attract more and more thoughts like that. So that's good news. But you got to get a handle on your thoughts, and you all know it's meditation is the key to gaining the space between your mind and what you're thinking and allowing you to make a decision on what you want to think about next. This law is the mirror of your self-worth and mindset. So if you're having a lot of trouble with bullies, if you're having a lot of trouble with friendships, or if you're feeling disrespected, if you're feeling unworthy, those are all things that you need to heal within in order to create better relationships with people. They are just reflecting how you feel inside. Absolutely. Anytime you have like a fear about something and then somebody comes at you about it, they are mirroring your fear. They are bringing that fear to light. Sometimes it's brought to you so that you can create a stronger determination. Like I don't know if you remember the story that I told a while ago about when we first moved to California and we met with a real estate agent who blew us out of the water. He was just like, your credit scores are terrible. You guys are in an awful spot. You're going to have to live in the ghetto kind of a thing. Um, you know, treating us like charity case and, uh, and I blew it. Like it pissed me off. And it was a good thing because my anger became determination. It fueled me. It kind of cleared out that low self-confidence, low self-esteem to go, hey, listen, I know who I am. And I know that I came here to create a beautiful home for myself and my family. And you're not going to stop me. You don't even know. You don't even know who we are. That was what I, when we left that office, we both were just like, oh, he doesn't even know who we are. And he doesn't even know how we create. And uh, we ended up not using him. And we ended up finding a beautiful apartment. So prove that shit wrong. So yeah, it's a mirror. And sometimes those mirrors are brought to us to help us clear something. So, you know, if somebody is is really activating a lot of low self-esteem in you or low self-confidence in you, that is an invitation for you to clean that shit up. If somebody is abusing you, if you're in an abusive relationship, you are tolerating that. You are conducting that because you are allowing it. So when you say enough is enough and you put your foot down about it, that's when they're going to stop doing it because they're going to know that they can't do that to you. They can't take advantage of you any longer because you're done. Be reclaiming your power on all fronts. Law of inspired action is number five. I love the law of inspired action. And this is why. Because often in life, we'll sit there and we'll wait. You know, we'll wait and we'll wait and we'll go, okay, I need a sign. I need something to happen. I need to feel like I'm going to be safe if I do this. And the truth is, when you are following your dreams or you are getting outside of your comfort zone, sometimes it feels like there's no net. Like when you first leap, 
you feel like there's nothing that there's nothing that's going to catch you. But the truth is there is always a net. There is always support and there is universal support that you cannot fathom right now in this moment that is going to come in and assist you and lead you along the way because you've leapt in faith. When we leap in faith, huge things happen. Trust me, huge things happen. So that law of inspired action is doing freaking something. Just do something that gets an activation in the energy field towards your dreams, towards what you're looking to create, towards that identity. What is that identity that I want to create? You know, if it's a business you want to start, it's super easy to create a website. Just start get just go in there, go to wix.com, start start messing around with templates and and what you want to say and what you want to do. Um you know, if it's a relationship that you want to be a part of, sometimes you got to get in the dating game. Sometimes you just got to get back out there. Sometimes you got to get in social environments. It's not necessary, but this is what it does. It inspired action actually helps you to feel a little hope, more hope. It allows you to feel a little excitement. It allows you to get into expectation instead of laying on your couch waiting for a guy to drop out of the sky or a girl to drop out of the sky. It gets you in some sort of inspired action. Now, it's important to do it from a good energy, you know, an energy where I'm just doing this to have fun. I'm just getting out there again. I'm just, um, I'm putting my best foot forward. I'm sharing with people what I want to create. And that's what lines you up with opportunities because it tells the universe that you're serious, that you really mean business, that you're not messing around anymore. When we booked our plane tickets from Connecticut to California, we were not messing around. There was no canceling that flight. We, were, we burned all the boats behind us. We were ready to take that leap of faith and do whatever we needed to do to start living our dreams because we couldn't live less than that any longer. It was life sucking. It was, you know, just our souls just were craving and desiring a change, like a really big change. So if you're feeling that way, there's a really important reason for that. And there may be some little, even little action steps to put in place to start moving towards that dream. Oh my God. It's one of my favorite things to do is creating those like epic journeys where you're just like, you know, no holds barred, just doing it, just just taking the leap of faith. And uh, God, you will not regret it. You will absolutely not regret it. I promise. All right. Number six is the law of perpetual transmutation of energy. That's a mouthful, right? Even the, I love this so much. Even the smallest action can have a profound effect. And this is what I mean when I say the millimeter shifts. Tony Robbins talks about the millimeter shift. It's a tiny little shift in the way that you think. It's a tiny little shift in the things that you do. It's a tiny little shift in the way that you present yourself and the way that you start looking at your life experience and trusting and believing that you have desires so that you can create them. I'm going to say that again. You have desires so you can create them. It would be a really cruel world that we lived in if we had desires we couldn't create. That would be freaking cruel. The fact that you have the desire means it's in the works for you. It's absolutely already in the works for you. And you just have to do the little millimeter shifts to get yourself there. Now, these little millimeter shifts could be something you know, as small as just upping your vibration. You know, I talked about mastering your vibration today. What are the little things that you can do to master your vibration? Well, you can get up every day and spend just two minutes. This is what I do. Two minutes in bed thinking about how grateful I am. Usually it's like how grateful I am for my husband because he's laying right next to me and I just, I adore him. And I'm really grateful for my workout because we're getting up, we're going to the gym. So if I can get into gratitude about my workout, before I work out, well, I'm much more likely to get out of bed, first of all. And second of all, I'm bringing a different energy to the gym. I'm not dragging myself there. I'm coming presenting gratitude and excitement for moving my body and for becoming stronger. So that's really important. Uh, so you can do that two minutes. You can get up and you can meditate. 
You can exercise. Exercise is one of the greatest ways to dump some dopamine on your day. Just creating from that, you know, up-leveling your serotonin levels, all those happy hormones, making your heart happy, making your heart release those chemicals and hormones that make you go, oh, vitality, life. Oh, I love life. I left the gym today. We had a really um, awesome workout this morning. And our trainer, who just happens to be our cousin, uh, who moved here from Connecticut. I will have him on the show at some point because his story, he's a manifestation master and he doesn't even really know it. Um, but our cousin, you know, really kicked our butt this morning and towards the end had us do like a 500 feet on the rower as fast as we possibly could. And then we had to do mountain climbers and planks. And this was all towards the end of our workout. And I just left there on top of the world. And I got in my car and I was feeling so great. And we're driving home and the sunrise is incredible. And I'm just like, this is life. You know, this present moment awareness of being in the moment with nature and just going to my husband, look at that sky. And he kept saying to me, look at that sky. And I'm like, and then I'm looking over like the sky is on the left and it's like orange and pink and just so beautiful and this blue that was just so beautiful and crystal clear blue you know, sandwiched in between. And then I'm looking over at the hillside, like where the canyons are, and they're covered in this pink hue from the sunrise. I mean, when you can be that present to life, first thing in the morning, you're taking your power back. You're managing your vibration from the most optimal moment in present day awareness, present moment awareness. It's incredible. It's so good. And you can't do it if you're in the monkey mind. If you're stressed, if you're worried about what's coming, if you're, you know, got your to-do list going already, like we were super present, you know, I feel like a lot of times exercise can clear your mind as well, you know, that high cardio where you can only focus on what's in front of you. I got into my plank today, which was only a minute, but like my mind was so clear and I was like, oh, I could probably do this for a while because I'm so clear. So um, and then just come, come home and meditate, like get into that meditation practice. My meditation today was super long. I think I did like an hour because I was so deep. So I did a guided for half an hour and then I just wanted to stay. I just wanted to stay. It was just delicious. Like it just felt so good. So then, then carry on with your day. You've already done all these beautiful little shifts. And then when you get into your day, you're in a higher vibration, so then when things happen to you, you're, you're chill, you know, you're not at the edge of your patience. You're not at the edge of your tolerance. You're actually able to really deal with life in a different way. And that is what creates more and more joy and more and more things to be appreciative of, which is the highest vibration. All right. So doing those small things for upliftment, listening to music, dancing. I love dancing. We went out this weekend and we danced and we danced. We actually went to go see two different bands um, by the seat of our pants. Did not expect to do this. We went out to dinner kind of early and uh, ended up at two two of our favorite places that we like to go to. And, and we saw our amazing um friend Nicholas. I'm going to call him my friend now because we've become friends and he's just incredibly talented. Nicholas Fersard. I should put his thing. I don't know if I've ever put his link down, but he's incredible. And uh, we just had a blast. We were home by like 1030 and it was great. And we just danced and we let loose and I let the music take me. And, you know, music is such an upliftment. And the first place we went was a, uh, a tribute band to the Grateful Dead, which, um, which was funny. It was great. Like the people, the people that were there were interesting. I just felt so much love this weekend. Like I just wanted to be with people. You know, I've kind of been in the house for a couple of weeks. The weather hasn't been great. And this weekend was like just embracing and loving people and just enjoying people and just, you know, just savoring it all, savoring it all. And then Sunday was gorgeous here in California. We got super duper lucky to have a 70 degree day in January. I think it was like 67. Laying on the beach with my friend. It was just, oh, just good stuff. Really, really good stuff. And I'm not telling you guys to brag about this. I'm telling you because it's about taking your life back. It's about deciding what do I want to do with my life? What do I want to feel? And it's putting those feelings out. I put a lot of joy out in this world. I do. I share a lot of joy. I share a lot of laughs. I'm at the edge of laughter most times. Uh, my husband and I have a, a very funny relationship. You know, we 
we're just lighthearted. And when you live that way, you experience life at a different level. And that's why I love to share this stuff because I want to infuse this for all of you. All right, number seven is the law of cause and effect. Y'all y'all ever heard of karma? The karma's going to get you. And this is why I don't get myself too concerned with things like revenge or getting people back because I believe in the law of karma. I believe that there is a cause and effect. I believe that the energy that you give out comes back to you. And this keeps me, you know, very... Um, very true to my nature. You know, I don't do things out of my nature like stealing or, you know, things like that or doing shitty things to people or, you know, like my integrity is solid. Is your integrity solid? Is your integrity solid with yourself? You know, are you making promises to yourself and then breaking them? If you don't have integrity with yourself, it's really hard to have integrity with other people. So start at home. Start with yourself. If you're making promises to yourself, you got to keep them. That's integrity. Decide that what you are sending out is what you're going to get back in your life. So, um, so yeah, really pay attention to that. Pay attention to, you know, like how, how, um, what level am I on in this life experience as far as what I allow in my experience, which is, you know, <clears throat> that whole thing of like how you allow people to treat you. And what am I allowing as far as like what I'm doing in my life experience? Am I doing shitty things? Am I ingesting shitty things? Am I allowing things into my field that no longer serve me, right? Am I allowing people to walk all over me? That kind of stuff. So really look at that because that law of karma is in effect and you will see evidence of it. And that's why you've got to be careful about, you know, the way you conduct yourself in relationships and if you're crapping all over people or using people or things like that. That's the law of cause and effect. And any action causes a reaction. What you do comes back to you. That is the law of cause and effect. Easy one. That's an easy one to get. All right. Number eight is law of compensation. Trust that you will be compensated for work and stay open to receiving it in many ways. I love this. And this is a concept that I realized from, it was a book that I read from Michael Bernard Beckwith called Spiritual Liberation and then Diane Collins' book, Do You Quantum Think? And this, this kind of hit me. It really hit me in the way that, you know, everything that we do, we are compensated for. So the energy that we give to the world, the love, the joy, the compassion, the service, comes back to us. It may not come back to us from that person. We may, may not get the financial, you know, if, if you believe that your finances come from, from an infinite source, if you believe that your finances come from the universe, from God, that you are always compensated, then you will see a flow of abundance that is different than you've ever seen before. When you're not nitpicky, when you're not like nickel and diming everyone, when you're just kind of in that level and grace of generosity, you're going to see it return to you. You are, and you'll see it in different ways. It's about opening yourself to abundance and it's about no longer constricting and feeling like everything you do has to be paid back by that particular person. Uh, for a while I had a client and, and she paid me for a long time and then she couldn't pay me anymore. And I still coached her. And the reason I did that is because you know, she had helped me at a time that I really needed it financially when we first moved here. And I loved her. I, I still love her. I adore her. And I just trusted. My abundance comes. Like, I just trust that it doesn't have to necessarily be this exchange. Now, I don't do that a lot. I don't give out free things a lot. Right now, I'm doing transformation calls. And the exchange of energy for that is to hear about my group and to have an interest in that. If you want to do a transformation call with me, that's a little bit different. I used to do a lot of free coaching. And I feel like that was a worthiness thing for me. And I don't feel like the, there was an exchange of value. So people didn't really value what I was doing. And so they didn't receive the gifts from what I was doing. So now I have, you know, my worthiness in place and my value in place, but I, I'm still generous. I am still generous and I still give and I still love and, uh, and I love that. And because of that, I feel like my life continues to get more and more abundant. Receiving con, uh, receiving cons, compensation for all that you contribute 
um, is a belief system of money comes from an infinite source and I will always be compensated for all that I do, but I'm not doing things to be compensated necessarily. I'm doing things to bring value because it's a passion that I have, right? If you're doing things to bring value and you're not necessarily price tagging everything you do or trying to get from everything you do, you're going to be much better off. I had a lady reach out to me recently. She wanted to do an angel reading for me on Instagram and I was like, you know, sure, sure. And then, you know, we start going down the road and she's telling me what to do. I had to like meditate and then say this prayer or something. Um, I'm always up for entertaining people's gifts and, and feeling them out and, and supporting what they do. And then she started telling me that, you know, I needed to pay her and stuff. And I said, well, you know, if the reading is valuable, I absolutely will pay for it. And it didn't, it didn't end up resonating. The reading didn't resonate with me. So I didn't feel like the value was there. And um, I was actually kind of taken aback because she kind of started this thing and made me feel like she was going to give it to me. And then she started. So be careful with that. Okay. Because if you're giving to get, if you're always giving to get, it's, it's a yucky energy. It's a yucky energy. It's when we're giving from the love of our own hearts, when we're giving from our overflow, when we're giving because we love and we have passion and we just have value bubbling out of us, it's a different energy than giving to get. I see a lot of people doing this with network marketing and it really turns me off. I got to tell you, I got to be truthful here. If you are doing network marketing and you are reaching out to people with DMs and, and instant messaging and you are just, we call it phishing because we used to do it. So I know, God, ugh, I hate that I used to do this, but it's, it's a mechanism of network marketing where they tell you, you got to, you know, contact so many people and you got to get in there. These people are not even building relationships with me. They are the very first conversation. It is called relationship marketing for a reason. They're not creating any sort of value. They're not creating any sort of relationship. They're just trying to sell to me. They're trying to get me in. And that I just, I get so turned off. I do not, however, give them yucky energy for the most part. I love and support them and cheer them on and pass gracefully because I think that when we're mean to people that are doing that and we're, you know, I just, I used to do it. So I know what it feels like to be supported and, um, you know, not to feel like you're a piece of shit for trying to do something. And, you know, when you, when, if you've ever been in a network marketing company, the trainings and the seminars are so like push, push, push. And if you are a competitive person and you get involved in, you know, things like uh, promotions and stuff, you could lose your mind a little bit. I definitely used to. And I'm not proud of that, but it was a huge part of my up-leveling and my growth. And I appreciate it because now, guess what? I have compassion for people who are doing that. All right, but don't do it. If you're doing it, stop doing that. It's not good. It's not good. Build relationships with people. Be authentic with people. Love people. Give value to people. That's how you create a successful network marketing business. Yeah by loving people and not just trying to sell to them. Number nine is the law of relativity. Everything is a spectrum of expression and there is more than one perspective on any situation or challenge. We get to assign a meaning to everything. And because of that, nothing ever has to be bad. Nothing ever has to be bad. We can shift our perspective on everything by deciding that everything is always working out for us. That this, whatever this situation is that is causing me angst or causing me to feel like I have a problem, it's creating solutions along the way. It is allowing me to up-level, expand, and grow in this life experience. And hella freaking luya, that's what I came here for. I came here to expand and grow. I came here to get in the contrast. I came here to create a greater capacity for joy. You know, I love using the um, analogy. And if you've never lived in a place like the East Coast or a place where they have storms, you know, when we used to have these huge hurricanes or these huge tornadoes, or one year we had a, um, we were calling it a tree mageddon because it snowed in October. And it's ne it had never snowed in October before, and the trees weren't ready for it yet. The trees get ready by dumping their leaves, right? And they get stronger when they do that. Well, they were weak, so all the trees got severed, which severed all of our power lines, and we didn't have power for seven freaking days. Now, I was lucky because we had a little generator, so I was able to, like, 
once we got the generator going, there was a couple days there where I had to like kind of find a shower every day. I like to shower every day. Um, but it was a super big challenge. I had to go sit in a Dunkin' Donuts to charge my phone. I mean, it was crazy. And so I can't even tell you how long it lasted that when I flipped a switch and the light went on, how appreciative I was, how I created a greater capacity and appreciation for electricity that I never had before. You know, the same thing happens when we have illness, when we go through the flu or when we go through cancer or we go through, you know, uh, a broken leg or a broken limb and then all of a sudden you can use it again and it's like, oh my gosh, I've never appreciated my legs before. I've never appreciated my my lungs before. So it gives you a whole new appreciation and a greater capacity for joy because you had the other end of it. So um, that's what happens when we get to assign a meaning to things and say, you know, good is coming from this. Nothing has to be bad. Uh, my partner Jess in M21 Revolutions always says, all things turn to good. I love that. All things turn to good. When you believe that, you see evidence of it quickly. You move energy a lot quicker because you're not in the resistance of what's happening. You've accepted it. And you're like, okay, cool. What good is going to happen from this? You know, there's good things coming for me. I know that. And I know that this contrast, this challenge, this problem is giving me a greater clarity for what I do want because now I know what I don't want. And that's the next one here is the law of polarity. So everything in the universe has a polar opposite. So up has a down, light has a dark. Um, this is what helps us to gain clarity on what we do want because we know what we don't want. So, you know, that's why things can't always be gravy. That's why things can't always be everything we love because we would get bored, honestly. If life was just okay and every day we had like, you know, a crazy amount of things to be happy about, eventually it wouldn't feel as good. It wouldn't feel as good. So knowing that, that there are things in our life that we do not prefer, that we do not want, and gaining clarity from those things about what we do want actually is what sparks more desire. That like when you know really strongly what you do want, your desire for what you do want has been up leveled and it is getting stronger. And so all of that energy of, you know, what we don't want that's happening is helping us to create solution as long as we're not in resistance to it. And as long as we are in that trust, it's still going to work out. Whether you're in fear or anxiety, it's still going to work out. But when you're in the trust and the faith of everything always works out for me, it moves faster. And you see evidence of it quicker. And you feel better. Isn't that the whole idea? Feeling better so that you're, vi you're mastering your vibration. You know, it should, like, every day should be a thing about what can I do right now that will, that will create a better feeling for me. If we lived that way, oh, we'd live in a fantastic society. We really would. All right, 10 is the law of perpetual motion. Everything is always changing. It's always changing. So if you are resistant to change, if you don't like change, you're going to have some issues with that because things are always changing. So enjoy the ride. Each stage has a tremendous gifts attached to it. At each stage, and each stage is about our expansion and growth. So hooray, like your struggles, your challenges, your dreams, the unfulfilled dreams that you have are a huge part of your expansion and growth. So if you can embrace that, and if you can be excited about that and happy about that, you're going you're gonna to be able to create a lot differently. You're going to master your vibration. All right, number 12, the law of giving and receiving. Another one of my favorites the law of giving and receiving. So if you're over giving all the time and you're never, I have a lot of friends who are unable to receive. They have a hard time receiving. They have a hard time asking for help and they're always giving. And because of that, they're empty. They're empty. And the, the, the idea of receiving, the energy of receiving is worthiness. I am worthy to receive. I know who I am. I know that I deserve this. I know that I'm worthy of this. If you're giving all the time and not receiving, you're out of balance. If you're receiving all the time and you're not giving, you're out of balance. You might be a narcissist. <laughs> if you're just taking, pay attention to that. Are you always taking and not giving? 
Because if you're always taking and not giving, how long do you think the universe is going to keep giving to you before that thing gets out of balance, right? And, and people start leaving your life because they're tired of giving to you. They're tired of the taking. I don't have too many people in my life. I don't really don't have any people in my life experience that are just takers. I know a taker. I know what it feels like. I don't appreciate it. I don't like it. And I don't want it in my life. So I usually eliminate takers because I know, I know that I'm worthy of more than that. And I know that because I do give so much value in my relationships, because I do love so much that I've got to be in balance because if I'm not in balance, then my, I start to suffer. And when I start to suffer, then I'm not as apt to give. I, I kind of retreat and I start to close down a little bit. So if you're feeling that you got to pay attention to the law of giving and receiving, you know, it doesn't have to be completely equal, but it's got to be pretty close. Like with my husband and I, our marriage works so well. I think because we are both in the balance of giving and receiving, like always, like, <coughs> excuse me, for the most part, we are always looking to make the other person's life easier, truly. <coughs> and it doesn't mean that we're, you know, it doesn't mean that we're over giving. It doesn't mean that we're depleted. It means that we have a really good time of, of satisfying the needs of the other. And because of that, the other person matches it. So it's a beautiful balance, almost like an infinity sign balance in our relationship. <clears throat> so if you're in a relationship and there's a lot of giving, you have to look at yourself in that. That's not necessarily the other person's fault. It's because you have tolerated it, because you have put yourself in a place where you don't feel worthy to receive. So you're not going to attract receiving. If you don't think you're worthy of receiving and you have a hard time accepting gifts and love and compliments, you're in an imbalance and it's time to do the inner work. It's time to go within. Join my new group, Ignite the Fire Within Challenge. I believe I'm going to start on February 2nd. That's feeling really good to me. So 2-2, two, 2-2. Two, two, two. I, I just freaking love that. Um, so February 2nd, uh, 2022, I'm going to start a new group. It's a six-week challenge. It will help you. It will help you to heal. It will help you to no longer cycle, um, you know, the, the same thing over and over again that you no longer want to create. You're going to get really familiar with the laws. You're going to be able to create differently. You're going to be able to master your vibration. You're going to get really good at mind training. Emotional release work is part of every single week. And uh, I have six different subjects that I go over. And um, it's tailor-made. We have a private Facebook group, so there's a lot of support. We share a lot of guided meditations in there. We share a lot of support and I have writing prompts that will uncover a lot of your subconscious stuff that you might not know is going on. Um, so when you're doing this giving and receiving thing, you are not tuned into the flow of the universe. There's an imbalance in your flow. And in order to rebalance the flow, you've got to look at your life and you've got to decide where am I giving too much to? Where do I feel depleted? Where do I feel resentful? That will always tell you where the imbalances are in your relationships. Now, if you look at your relationships and you're like, okay, well, it's my kids and I, and I have to give to my kids because, you know, they're little and they'll starve or whatever. There are ways that you can, you know, honor yourself. There are ways that you can you know, create times of self-care in that, you know, a mom or a dad of young children, God bless you all. It is a challenge and it is a 24 seven challenge, especially if your kids are sick or if they're up all night, or if you got a, a young baby, you know, those things are like, you're kind of in survival mode. You know, I, I haven't done it from like this perspective of law of attraction with a baby. Cause I didn't really know about it when my youngest was a baby. But as I come into this knowing, I, you know, you got to wonder, like, how much better could life be if I understood about energetic exchange with my children? If I understood that when I am filled up, everybody else is going to benefit from that. When I take a break, when I go exercise, I used to get up at like five o'clock in the morning and literally like pump breast milk so I could go to the gym. Like that was so important to me that I would do that so that if the baby woke up, my husband had, you know, a means to feed her so that I could go and get my body in an optimal place. During their naps, I would meditate. 
I wouldn't actually do any housework during their naps. I always did everything in the morning, got everything done, situated, the house was all set, the laundry was done, and by afternoon it was meditation and sometimes a little nap to rejuvenate my spirit because you've got to have yourself in a really strong vibrational place to deal with these little beings, you know? They're intense, man, and they never stop, right? So, and the other thing I used to do when my kids were small is they had early bedtimes, like 7 o'clock, 7.30, they were in bed. And I didn't negotiate on that for a very long time because my husband and I needed our space. We needed our time. That was when I felt like I could be me, you know, and not just be mommy. So um, that was a tangent that I didn't expect to get off on. But um, yes, so these are the 12 laws of the universe. You have them in your arsenal now. You have them as your tools. So just pay attention. Like the biggest one to really pay attention to is the law of attraction. What am I sending out? What are the signals that I'm sending to every little subject in my life? What are the signals that I'm sending to the people in my life? What are the signals to the people I'm driving around? You know, are you pissed off when you're driving? I used to be a pretty... Um, yeah, pretty agitated driver, you know, and I've really chilled out. Like, I don't feel like I have to just race all the time. I've really just kind of chilled and gotten into the experience of just the present moment, you know, looking around at the sky and just the beauty of the day and the beauty of everything that's around me and stop living so much in my head. You know, driving is one of the greatest times to like quiet your mind. Um, listening to great music or listening to podcasts. It's just a great time to do that. So what is the energy that you're bringing to each activity? And are you taking a stand with your vibration on a daily basis? Or are you just creating by default? Are you waking up every day and just letting life have its way with you? Because if you are, you know, you're, you're, you're giving a lot of your power away. And you're not really allowing yourself to conduct from what you're deciding you want to feel. Uh, I have a journal right now. I think I showed last um, time. I have journals for sale in my store, which I have the links, and they're up on my Live Life Golden page too on Facebook. Um, I have this little journal, and what I've been doing with my journal every day, and if you do buy a journal, please email me at livelifegolden at gmail, and I will send you a little PDF of what to do and how to, how to manifest with this journal. But what I've been doing every day is not necessarily writing down what I want in the physical, but more like what I'm looking to feel, what I'm looking to create through my feelings. And I amp up those feelings as I write them down, you know, appreciation and love and fun and laughter and lightheartedness and um, growth in my podcast and growth of my subscribers. I now have subscribers. You can be a VIP member for $20 a month and I will send you extra stuff. I just did a cute little video for them the other day. I'm going to send you guided meditations and emotional release stuff. I may do some giveaways of water bottles or journals. I'm not really sure. As you know, I get intuitions and as I get inspirations, that shit happens. Uh, Quantum Speak is about to come out on audio. If you haven't read that yet, it's a good one to read, like to ingest that way and then listen to the audio after. But that should be out this week, uh, hopefully on audio. And I may be giving that away for free to my VIP members. We'll see. Uh, you can also be a $5 subscriber just to show the exchange of value. If you're really getting value from this podcast, share it with your friends. This word needs to get out. We need to share these laws of the universe. We need to share the fact that we can reclaim our power. And we need to take our world back. We need to decide that when we get up every day, our joy, our happiness, our love, our compassion is becoming something. It really is. It is expanding upon itself. And because we are all connected, because we are in a collective consciousness, we can override the fear with our power. We can over, you know, one person who is in alignment with who they really are is more powerful than a million who are not. So we can take our power back for our world by deciding in our worlds that our worlds are going to be conducted from this beauty and grace and fun and lightheartedness. And we can do it. We can do it. And I, and I know you can do it. I know that if you're listening to this, you are part of this revolution. You are part of the wave of freedom. You are part of the wave of, of just creating a better life. 
a better life to come, a better life right now. Like what's so good right now? There's so many good things right now. Just waking up every day and, and putting your feet on the floor and being able to walk across the room should be something to jump for joy about, right? The fact that we get to be with people and be in relationships with people. I am so in love with people and just the way they talk and the way they dress and what they do and the beauty of their spirits. I'm just in love. And when you walk around in love, guess what? There's a lot more love out there for you. And that's a beautiful way to live. All right. I love you guys. If you have questions, let me know at livelifegolden at gmail. And also I have a website, livelifegolden.com. I'm going to have my store stuff up there pretty soon. And, um, the Ignite the Fire Within Challenge is starting February 2nd. Also, Live Life Golden on Facebook has a private community, a little cute. Actually, I don't know if it's private. I think it's actually public now. Um, but, you know, go in there. That's where I put my daily quotes, and that's where I share my my podcasts and all the different things that I do. So, uh, yeah, let's do this, you guys. I'm, I'm super pumped for 2022, and, uh, and I love you all. Peace.